So this is a tried and true method of herping known as cruising. It is the laziest and yet most effective way to herp. Essentially you find a good productive road that crosses some habitat where you know that the species you're targeting will be moving back and forth between you know segments of habitat and you just go up and down a selected road that you know is going to do well until you find what you're looking for. We have the one and only David Oren of TikTok fame in the back. He's another local herper. Uh, I've known him for several years. We herp together from time to time. You guys probably know him as like the reincarnation of Steve Irwin on TikTok. Um, I know him as David, that kid I started herping with when he was 17 years old. And we are out here looking for platys today, or Simus. I mean, heterodon in general. Some species spend up to two or three minutes on a road as they're crossing which means that if you can cover a lot of ground on a road that goes through good habitat, odds are that you will catch a snake crossing when it crosses. Oh, there's a snake, yeah, I think you're all. You barely met that guy, man. Whoa. Chance got close. Why you gotta be out here so small, garter yeah, snake? Yeah, it's okay, man. Good swerve, man, good yeah, swerve. absolutely. So this right here is a little eastern garter snake, which Chance magnificently uh, swerved for. So yeah, this is a really pretty kind. Um, sometimes they're sort of brownish or, I don't know, sort of uglier colors. Yeah. Out here in western Alachua County, these snakes are really gorgeous, and they got this nice green coloration. They get a lot prettier than this. I mean, we've seen some oh, blue, straight up blue green ones out here. Yep. Um, as they get you, bigger, they'll get that way. When you get to the nature coast, too, you see the true blue striped garters. The true blue, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There we go, a little bite and chance. Also, they're another one of those ones who are mildly, mildly venomous. So I was too. just going to ask you, yeah, can you yeah. tell us how the venom works? Absolutely. Well, so they've got a Duvernoy's gland. It basically, it's not a real efficient venom delivery system. It kind of dribbles out of their mouth uh, into their saliva, which is fine for killing like toads and small amphibians and their usual prey. Um, but for us, I, the worst reaction I've ever heard is like itching. A little itchy. Yeah, people are like, oh man, that bite gets a little itchy. But they are gorgeous little snakes, man. Super slept on. They're one of those snakes that people are like, oh yeah, and garter snakes. We get garter snakes in the area. I'm that person. And, and people, yep. oh, come on, okay. man. They're yep. such pretty little snakes. There We've are people, some, some good bycatch to start our morning. It's absolutely a good secondary species that I do not mind finding. These habitats are already fragmented and damaged enough and populations are already pillaged enough that like the last thing we want to do is, is add to that stress on the natural world. So when we find a beautiful snake like this, we admire it, we talk about it, we get our satisfaction out of it, and then we let that animal go about its way and continue on its life. So Look at that dude, conservation is, done right. Absolutely man, what a little cutie. I'm All right, satisfied. let's get back. Hey, to the man, we didn't get totally stuck today. Good work. That's a woolly bear, isn't it? Oh, that is a millipede. Carter, get the mill. Oh, we scared him. Is that a that's my life for millipede? No way. First oh ever. Oh my gosh. I, they're like the centipedes, but they smell worse. That's crazy. Careful, they're full of cyanide. Uh, they just pooped on my hand. Lovely. Okay. Have you ever seen the way that they poop? Uh, Dude, you mean like on my head? Like, no, you see the poop. Have you seen the method which with, with which like they poop? Like with their millipede butts. Dude, it like it opens up like a like a no, vent. No, no. Like it opens up like a flap, and then it comes out, and then it reshuts like a like airtight. It's amazing. To, the, oh man, yeah, that's incredible. That's I right. Flap. That's good luck. <laughs> millipede poop is good luck. So, so I always have a little rule out when herping, and every stick looks like a snake, but no snake truly looks like a stick. Like when you see a snake shape in the road, you'd be like. That's a snake. It's heads up. It's you know tapered properly. It just uh, it's different. Guys, drive forward really slowly, like five miles an hour, real fast. <laughs> That's awesome. You're the coolest. Uh oh, go back for him. Go back for him. Do I go back for him? Oh, jeez. Uh, fine. <laughs> That was crazy, dude. Were you scared of that big grip? Nah. Dude, you're raw. I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're herping. Now this is herping. Oh boy, there we go, there we go. Speed up, speed up, speed up. <sighs> if you were fast, we wouldn't have to speed up. I know, but it's more fun. We're trying to launch off the road, you know? He's a... When do I get that janky down? looking racer. Do you mind, bud? We're trying to film something here, okay? We need you to be a little bit more polite than this. So this is one of the most common snakes that you will find here in North Central Florida and in the entire Southeast, honestly. These guys become pretty much a, uh, like a, 
I don't know. What's something common you see? These are these are street signs. They're no rodeo. You, it's, yeah, they're C tier. Yeah, these are water snakes. You see these guys all over the place. It doesn't make me any less excited because I always love seeing snakes in general. Um, but these guys are black racers. They will show up in your yard. They will show up on your pool deck. They will show up on dirt roads. They will show up in swamps. There's pretty much not a habitat in Florida that I can think of where you won't find these little generalists. They will eat just about anything. They're super fast, visual hunters. They're crazy active, crazy opportunistic. When we have destroyed every other habitat and we've lost all our niche species, this is gonna be one of the last snake species that we do still have cruising around. Lucky enough for them, I suppose, but uh, uh, a sad fact. They have a lot of attitude for a snake their size, especially a non-venomous snake. You know, they're not afraid to bite you and they're not afraid to like, you know, show their mouth, but they are at the end of the day, completely harmless. There's nothing they can do to you. He's bit me like five times since I picked him up and like that's the most damage he's done is that little pinprick on my finger, which I didn't even feel. So there's absolutely no sense in killing them or chopping their head off or freaking out or overreacting. They're just a little limbless reptile, see? biting me doesn't hurt at all um, take a broom take a dustpan sweep him out the door uh, chances are you won't get close enough to touch him anyway black racers are very fast and they don't like people I mean you can pretty much target these guys anytime throughout the day um, I've seen racers in over 100 degree weather uh, once it's nighttime they're pretty much gone it's kind of hard to see a racer at night but in the daytime rain or shine I mean these guys will just be out and about so it's important to always try to release a snake in the direction that they're going by the way and the reason for that is if you turn them around they're just going like if you take them across the road the opposite direction they were going they're just going to turn around more more often than not and cross the road again and we don't want that to happen we don't want them to cross the road again because not every car that goes down the road is a herper who's just trying to be uh nice and take pictures of them some people just run them over so we always try to let them go in the direction they were heading oh don't get all defensive look at that look he's gonna stand and fight that is your typical threat display that you'll see out of a black racer oh and then they run away so this is this is right when people usually are like oh the snake chased me this is like all this because it held its ground and if it did like a bluff strike like if i approached and he was like i'm gonna bite you come on give it give me a bluff strike Pick, pick a hand, pick a hand. This hand, that hand, pick a hand, just pick a hand. Like if you approach this, oh, see, so take off. That's kind of cool, the little flattening he's doing this head there is pretty awesome. He's indecisive. He doesn't know whether he wants to take off or whether he wants to stand west. his ground. Do your thing, bud. This, he chased you! This, right, right, exactly. This is all a snake does. They don't want anything to do with you. They will hold their ground if they feel like they can't get away. But if you've noticed, every time we've given him a little bit of birth, he's tried to move off a little bit in a, in a, in a direction exactly. away from us. And that is all he prefers to do. I'll show you this. If you go and you will set it down right by the edge of the grass there, he will absolutely take oh, off. Because he'll feel confident in his ability to get away. Boop. <laughs> he just let me boop him. That was lovely. What an experience. I'm going to go ahead and put you on the side of the road. Right? Or not on the side of the road. Over here and put you. Okay, thanks, Al. And he's gone. Stop the car and do a flip. I can't. Matt. I'm old. You won't. You won't. Matt, you won't. You, you won't. won't. Do a flip. Do a flip. No, can you do a flip? Yeah. Can you do it better than Chance? Probably. Probably. I've seen Chance do a flip. Excuse this. I'm impressed. Let me break my I can't flip at all. You're cool. Yeah, don't. Don't like. <laughs> Already off to a good start. No, I've done more flips in my life already than you probably ever will in yours. Maybe. Completely. But I just go, talking a lot of smack I, right Yo, he now. can go just do like that's a lot 20 of flips a day. Woo! That's oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I used to go out <laughs> like two Dude, I'm hours impressed. Like can you do it better? Hey, hey, hey. What is that? It is a tortoise, you got it. Do not touch the tortoise, you'll get in trouble. So a lot of people who are familiar with Florida's ecology are very, very familiar with this species, but people who outside the state of Florida may not know, this is the gopher tortoise. These guys are what we call a keystone species, and they are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly protected in this area. You can't so much as touch these guys without a permit, and I did not touch him. We walked up and just started filming him here. I have left him unperturbed. But these guys are a keystone species because their burrows are exclusive habitat for dozens and dozens of species and their secondary habitat for dozens and dozens more. And there are 
countless amphibian, reptile, mammal species that, that without their burrows would not be able to exist in these ecosystems. And their breeding is slow. Their success rate with babies is low. Uh, when you have an established population, it takes a long time for that population to grow. So they are a very fragile yet very important part of our ecosystem. And the state of Florida has done a really good job of making these guys a well-known protected species. However, we still run into the problem of development um, taking out tortoises. The only repercussion for development in tombing tortoise burrows is a fine. Um, and so as it stands, a lot of uh, developers, if they have enough money, you know, something that's illegal just becomes legal if you pay enough for it. So uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of these tortoises are entombed every year by development. And uh, we work hard to try to spread awareness uh, of this, especially because it is such an imperiled and important species in this ecosystem. And awesome to see. This tortoise right here, uh, God, it's hard to say, but he's probably over 20 years old at this point, at the very least, most likely much older. Um, and He's been in this area his entire life and he's an important member of the adult breeding population and we need these guys And we need to keep them protected. So David you have anything to say about these guys? I'm just texting my friends. Yeah, go tortoises are pretty cool. Chance spoke way more eloquently than I did man You covered, you covered everything about them, dude. Hey, let's let's do this though Let's uh, pull out your, your phone and we'll, we'll, we'll do like a little TikTok. Just like 15 seconds. Why would it? Let's, let's wait for a snake. Just practice. Why not? It's not gonna hurt. Just do it. What's okay? Yeah, 15 seconds of what you gave like give give like the just the summary, the best, if you can fit 15 or 20 seconds, say 20 seconds, just go. Okay. Just highlight it. Uh, these are gopher tortoises. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'll go for it. Okay. Introduce yourself, who you are. Hi, I'm Chance Chick. This is a gopher tortoise. This is one of the most important species in the state of Florida. So many other species depend on these guys, and we have to look out for and protect these guys. So make sure if you see these guys crossing the road, please do not run them over. Let them get across safely. They are super duper duper important to our ecosystem. Nailed it. Perfect. No one asked me recently what the fastest species of tortoise is, and I had to think about it, and I was like, yo, it's probably that a gopher tortoise. That was me. Was it you? That was me. I told you, it was probably a gopher tortoise. That'd be a really cool snake. It's matte black. It, it's like matte jet black. What is this child doing? It's a tire. October success. Oh. People come from all over this, the country to find these guys here, man. And they live right down the street from me. Super duper lucky. Believe it or not, too, they don't get a whole lot bigger than this. We're gonna release him. Just like you should anytime you're herping, man. I'm not a huge, like, I don't try to like naysay collectors. I don't, you know, it's not really my business what you do as long as it's legal what you're doing in your state, but I don't collect. It's just not personally. I like to leave nature where it's at. But wow, what an absolute stunning little snake, man. And chill too. He didn't give me any theatrics. No, he gave me one little hiss as I picked him up. One little tiny hiss. But no, no hood flaring, no death, no fake death, no none of that. No fake strikes. Just an absolute little stunner. Boys, we did it, man. Let me get around the high fives. We found, Woo! Uh, we found a hoggy, baby. Hogtober. All right, well, we're gonna let this little dude get on his way. I straddled him too. I went, like, I, I saw him, and a lot of the times when you're herping, if you see a snake and it's too late to like swerve all the way out of the way, you gotta put him between the tires. That's the only way to do it. And that's absolutely the way it went with this little guy. And then you get to take off and find a little burrow to disappear into and hopefully find some toads to get you through the winter, man. That's why they're on the move this time of year too. They do a little bit of a brumation through the winter time. So they're like, man, I need to get these amphibians up. <laughs> He's young, mm -hmm. but they only get like maybe twice that big. So huh. like that, <laughs> they stay pretty small. Oh, that's awesome. That's a good find. And that is it for today. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. That kind of support is what helps us make content like this. 
Um, so make sure you guys like and subscribe and follow and whatever that nonsense is. We're gonna wrap up and take these boys home. Until next time.